Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to two-way MANCOVA. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. A MANCOVA is a multivariate analysis of covariance. And a two-way MANCOVA is a MANCOVA that has two independent variables. So we use a two-way MANCOVA when we want to determine the difference between adjusted means in two or more unrelated groups across a linear combination of dependent variables and taking into account two independent variables or factors. Independent variables are also referred to as factors. The reason that we are trying to determine the difference between adjusted means and not just between means is because we have at least one covariate in the model. This is a variable that we believe explains variance in the dependent variable and we want to control for it. So we want to see the effect of the independent variables on a linear combination of the dependent variables while partialing out the effects of one or more covariates. So let's consider an example. Let's say you have a group of participants and you are assessing them with a depression inventory and an anxiety inventory after treatment. And the treatment comprises three levels. So the independent variable treatment has three levels, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, reality therapy, and existential therapy. So CBT, reality, and existential therapy, that represents three levels of one independent variable treatment. Let's say you also want to consider another independent variable, gender, and you assign two levels, male and female. So you have independent variable gender, independent variable treatment, a dependent variable depression, a dependent variable anxiety. Those are measurements. And you have the results of a measure that takes into account the number of stressors or the amount of stress that a participant is under. And you're going to use that result as your covariate because you believe that the amount of stress that a participant is under has an effect on both the depression score and the anxiety score and you want to see what the effect of gender and treatment are while controlling for the effect of stress. So that research design would be appropriate for two-way MANCOVA. You have the two independent variables, you have a covariate, and you have two dependent variables. So when looking at the null hypotheses for two-way MANCOVA, the adjusted means of the first factor are equal. That's the first null hypothesis. So in this case, treatment. The adjusted means of the second factor are equal. So in this case, gender. And the third null hypothesis is that there's no interaction between the independent variables. So no treatment times gender effect. Now just as is the case with ANOVA, when you have an independent variable in the model that has three or more levels or groups, as the treatment variable does in this example, CBT, reality, and existential, you need to perform a post hoc test to see where the difference is so for example, if you're looking at gender and you have those two levels, male and female, and you are given a statistically significant result by 2A Mancova, you know where the difference is. The difference would be between the two levels, male and female. That's the only difference that could exist. However, on the treatment independent variable, you have CBT, reality, and existential, and you get a statistically significant p-value, you don't know where that difference is. It could be between CBT and reality, CBT and existential, or 
reality and existential. And you could have more than one statistically significant difference. You could have two or all three possible differences. So we would have to use a post hoc test to know where the difference is. If both of the independent variables in 2A Mankova only have two levels, then there's no need for a post hoc test. Now the question that comes up with Mankova, 2A Mankova, or MANOVA, which would be a statistic that's the same except without a covariate, is why not just run separate ANCOVAs or ANOVAs? So in this example, why not perform more than one two-way ANCOVA instead of performing one two-way MANCOVA? So a two-way ANCOVA is the same as a two-way MANCOVA, except for it only has one dependent variable. So one two-way ANCOVA would be for depression, and one two-way ANCOVA would be for anxiety. The reason it's usually better to perform a two-way MANCOVA is that there is more power in a two-way MANCOVA than separate two-way ANCOVAs. And power means the ability to detect a difference that's actually there. So you could have a non-statistically significant result for the two-way ANCOVA for depression and another non-statistically significant result for the two-way ANCOVA with anxiety as the dependent variable. And yet, if you performed a two-way MANCOVA, you could find a statistically significant result there using that linear combination of those two dependent variables, depression and anxiety. Now there are instances where it may be a better idea to consider performing multiple two-way ANCOVAs. And that's when the dependent variables are uncorrelated or highly correlated. So now let's take a look at the elements of a two-way MANCOVA. And of course some of this was covered in the first slide. You have two independent variables. Each independent variable has two or more levels. These levels represent independent groups. And with the two-way MANCOVA, we have a between subjects design. For two-way MANCOVA, you can also have two or more dependent variables. They need to be measured at the continuous level of measurement, so they're either interval or ratio. And the interval and ratio levels of measurement are similar, except for the concept of true zero. So ratio, the ratio level of measurement, there is a meaningful distance between the observations and the scale has a true zero. So if you look at the Kelvin temperature scale, it measures heat and a zero represents on the Kelvin scale represents an absence of heat. So the zero represents an absence of the construct that the scale measures. That's a ratio level variable. The interval level variable for temperature, one would be Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit has a zero. That's a potential observation on the Fahrenheit scale. But it doesn't represent an absence of heat, so it's not a true zero. Also in 2A Mancova, you have one or more covariates. And just like the dependent variables, the covariates are measured at the continuous level of measurement. Now taking a look at the assumptions for two-way MANCOVA. With any inferential statistic, our data need to meet certain assumptions so that we can proceed with the analysis. And there are quite a few here for two-way MANCOVA. You need to have independence of observations. So on those dependent variables, one score, for example, on the depression inventory can't be dependent on another score on that inventory. All the observations must be independent. The next assumption is the assumption of multivariate normality. Now, This construct of multivariate normality is difficult to directly assess. So it's not unusual that we use a few different methods and then look at those results and make a determination 
about whether or not we have multivariate normality. One potential test would be testing normality, univariate normality, and that would be where the residuals would be normally distributed for each level of the two independent variables. So in the case of treatment times gender, treatment had three levels, and gender has two levels. So you multiply that and you get six distributions that need to be evaluated for normality. And we could evaluate these distributions for normality with the Shapiro-Wilk test. With the Shapiro-Wilk test, a p-value of less than 0 0.05 is considered indicative of a non-normal distribution. A p-value, probability value of greater than 0 0.05 would indicate that you have met the assumption of normality. And you'd also want to look at the skewness and kurtosis for each distribution, as well as the histograms for each distribution. Now again, this is univariate normality, and the assumption is for multivariate normality. So we also want to take a look at the Mahalanobis distance. The Mahalanobis distance indicates whether we have multivariate outliers. And if you have one or more multivariate outliers, that could be an indication that your data have violated the assumption of multivariate normality. Next we have the assumption of linearity. So you need to have linear relationships between all the pairs of the dependent variables. And you also need a linear relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable for each level of the independent variables. And of course in two-way Mankova you would have to test that linear relationship between the covariate and multiple dependent variables. And each of those relationships would have to be linear. The next assumption is homogeneity of variance covariance matrices. And when looking at covariance it's not unusual to use the boxes M test and the boxes M test is a highly sensitive test, so it's usually evaluated at a, an alpha of 0 0.001. So oftentimes, different tests that we perform, like the Shapiro-Wilk or the Levine's test for homogeneity of variance, we use an alpha of 0 0.05. So below 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and a p-value greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject. The boxes M test, that alpha value, instead of being 0 0.05, is oftentimes 0 0.001. So to reject the null hypothesis, the p-value would have to be less than 0 0.001. The last assumption for two-way Mankova is homogeneity of regression slopes. So this states that we can have no interaction between the covariate and the independent variables. I hope you found this introduction to two-way Mankova to be helpful. Thanks for watching.